Alright guys, welcome to Daily Problems 3. This is a no calculator section, so sad I know. Alright, here we go. Question 1. Let f be the function given by f of x equals the square root of x minus 3. Part A. Sketch the graph of f and shade the region r enclosed by the graph of f. The x-axis, the vertical line, x equals 6. Alright, so here we go. Start by putting in some lines here. So, nice axes here. All right, so the function square root of x minus 3, well, that's going to be a function that does not allow us to be, um, it's not going to be on the other side of the uh, y axis. And it's basically a square root function. We know that's going to be some kind of function going off like this here, right? Something like that. But it's shifted over to the right 3, right? Anything with x is wrong. So it's not going to be minus 3. It's going to be to the right 3. So 1, 2, 3. And then something like that, right? Okay. And then the x-axis. Um, so we'll... Something right, kind of like that. And then the vertical line, x equals 6. 4, 5, 6. And then we get a vertical line. Right? So uh, some kind of... Right, um, okay, well, we'll move that over. Okay. Uh, try and get just this really... Something like that. Okay. All right. So there we go. And there's our graph. And uh, shaded region R. Right. So here's R. And we'll shade it in something like this. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Part B. Find the area of the region R described in part A. Okay, so the area is going to be some kind of integral, right? And we're going from x equals 3 to x equals 6. And we don't even have to worry about a bottom function, right? We're just going from here to the x axis. So the integral of x minus 3 dx. Right? Nothing to it. All right. So this is going to be a u substitution. So we're going to say, um, we'll do this in blue, u equals x minus 3, du equals dx, and 3 is going to become, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 6 is going to become, 6 minus 3 is 3. So, brand new integral, we're going to have the integral from 0 to 3. And the square root, instead of being x minus 3, is going to be the square root of u. And instead of dx, we're going to have du. Right? And since we have bounds, we're never going to come back to u. Uh, sorry, we're never going to come back to x. And then the, the square root, right, that's the same as 0 to 3 of u to the 1 half, du. Then we add 1 to 1 half to get u to the 3 halves. And then we divide by 3 halves, or the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And then we're going to go from 0 to 3. So we're going to get 2 thirds, 3 to the 3 halves, minus 0. But minus 0 to the 3 halves is just uh, 0, so we don't need to worry about it. And that's your answer. Now, if you had something like 8 to the 3 halves, you could try and actually plug that in and get a number, but 3 to the 3 halves is basically 3 to the 3 halves, right? There's no number there. There's nothing that you're going to be able to do to get a nicer number than that. So there's your answer. Okay. All right. Uh, for part C, I'm going to uh, take a picture of our graph here so that we have a graph to work from. All right. 
Let's see if our likes this. All right. Part C. Rather than using the line x equals 6, consider the line x equals w, where w can be any number greater than 3. Okay, so new line, um, and we'll draw the line in, uh, let's say, in blue, anywhere we want. Where w can be any number greater than 3. Let A of W be the area of the region enclosed by the graph of F, the x-axis, and the vertical line x equals W. Write an integral, integral expression for A of W. Very similar to what we did before, um, except not using this line. Okay. So, we have A of W equals the integral from starting at 3. And instead of ending at 6, now we're ending at W. And we're still going from top to bottom here. Square root of X minus 3 DX. Part C. Pretty simple. And then part D. Let A of W be as described in part C. Find the rate of change. Okay, so we see rate of change, we're thinking derivative, right? So we want to find a prime of w with respect to w when w equals 6. So we want to find a prime of 6. That's our goal, okay? Well, in order to find a prime of 6, we have to find a prime of w first, okay? So a prime of w means find the derivative with respect to w of that integral. All right, we know how to do that, right? That's fundamental theorem of calculus part one, right? We don't have to write that. Um, the only way to take integrals, uh, the derivative of integrals is to use FTC part one, but I figured I'd write it in in case you guys have forgotten. So fundamental theorem of calculus part one. And so all we have to do is take this W and plug it in for X. Um, done nothing to it but to do it. And if, if this hadn't been W and this had been like W cubed or W squared, we would plug in W cubed or W squared and then multiply by the derivative of W. Okay. Um, but in this case, it's pretty simple. And so this is a prime of W and then we just plug in 6. And so we're going to get square root of 6 minus 3, which is just square root of 3. And that's it. It's a pretty simple question there. All right. All right. On to question two. A particle moves along the x-axis so that its acceleration at any time t greater than zero is given by a of t equals 12t minus 18. At time t equals one, the velocity of the particle is v of one equals zero and its position is x of one equals nine. Write an expression for the velocity of the particle v of t. All right. So we know, hopefully, that v of t right, is one step backwards from a of t, the integral okay. oh, losing the pen here. So we're going to take the integral. All right, the integral of 12t minus 18 dt, well, Integral of 12t is going to be 12t squared divided by 2 minus uh, integral of 18 is 18t plus c. Never forget your plus c. And of course, 12 divided by 2 is going to be 6. So 6t squared minus 18t plus c. All right. And then, of course, they tell us that v of 1 equals 0. All right. So if v of 1 equals 0, that means that 6 times 1 squared, otherwise known as 6, minus 18 times 1, also known as 18, plus c had better be equal to 0. 
So 6 minus 18 is negative 12 plus C has to be equal to 0. So C is 12. All right. So V of T is actually 6T squared minus 18T plus 12. Not so bad, right? Okay. I have a funny feeling that's going to come in handy in a few moments. So I'm going to bring this over to our next page. All right. At what values of t does the particle change direction? At what values of t does the particle change direction? So the first thing that we need to remember here is that the particle changes direction when v oopsie particle changes direction when v of t changes sign right either from positive to negative or negative to positive oh i'm slanting badly here okay so we need to figure out when is v of t going to change sign, either positive to negative or negative to positive. So we can do that. So v of t equals 6t squared minus 18t plus 12. And we can factor that, I think. So let's factor out a 6. And we'll get t squared minus 3t plus 2. I think we can factor that one more time. Uh, using just regular binomials, right? So t and t, and 2 and 1, and I think they should both be negative, equals 0. So that tells me that t equals 2 and t equals 1 are where t equals 0, right? Oopsie. Problem here. So t equals 1 and t equals Two. But then we have to check and make sure that that is not only where it equals zero, but also where it's changing direction, because it could be kind of like a saddle point when we were talking about max and min. So we check using a number line, and we say t equals one and t equals two, and we say, well, here, if I plug in, for instance, t equals 0, I get negative and negative. Negative times negative is positive. And here I have, like, at 3 halves, I would have negative and positive, so that's negative. And here I get, let's say, 3, and that's positive and positive. So it changes sign here, and it changes sign here. So these are the two points. So we're good. OK? And just to be safe, you may want to say something like um, v of t you know, goes from plus to minus. v of t goes from minus 2 plus, just in case. Okay? All right. Part C. Write an expression for the position of the particle. Okay? Once again, I think we're going to need our velocity expression here. And we know, I'll put it over here. So. I, just like before, where we knew that velocity was equal to the integral of acceleration, we know that our position function will be equal to the integral of velocity. So we're going to take the integral of 6t squared minus 18t plus 12. Right? And 
And 6t squared, we're going to get 6t cubed over 3 plus, uh, minus, sorry, minus 18t squared over 2 plus 12t plus c. Better known as 6 divided by 3 will give us 2t cubed minus 18 divided by 2 is 9t squared plus 12t plus c. Okay. And then they tell us very kindly that x of 1 equals 9. So if x of 1 equals 9, well, x of 1, 2 times 1 cubed is 2. 9 times 1 squared is 9. And 12 times 1 is 12 plus c. And 2 minus 9 is negative 7 plus 12 is 5. Plus c equals 9. c must be 4. Put it all together, and we get that x of t must be 2t cubed minus 9t squared plus 12t plus 4. Goodness. There's a mouthful for you. <laughs> all right, so I'll put these together and take a picture because we may need these guys. All right, so our last piece here says that we need to find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 3 halves to t equals 6. Now, ordinarily, if this were a calculator problem, right, we would do this very quickly. We would say that we want the integral from 3 halves to 6 of the absolute value of v of t dt and we plug it into our calculators and we'd be done, right? But we can't do that because we have a problem in that, well, we don't have our calculators and if we wanted to try and do this by hand, well, we'd have to go, we'd have to find our switching points and then we'd have to take several integrals. So this gets a little more complicated. We'd have to find the integral from 3 halves, and we know the switching points, right? Our switching points are at 1 and 2, right? That's where our integral goes, our, our velocity integral goes from positive to negative. So we'd have to find the integral from 3 halves to 2, right? 1 is before 3 halves, so we don't have to worry about it. So from 3 halves to 2 of v of t dt, and then we'd have to take the integral from 2 to 6 of v of t dt. And since we know from our number line that before 1, it's positive, and then between 1 and 2, it's negative, and this is positive, this one would be the negative integral. So we'd say this is negative, and then this is positive. And that sounds like an awful lot of work. Right? This may not be the best choice for us. But remember that the integral of v of t is x of t. We've sort of already done this. Way back when, we actually had a different way of finding total distance. You may have forgotten it. It involved using x of t. And what we did was we said if we knew the switching points, all we had to do was find x of t and subtract, right? So what we did was we said if we knew the switching point, which in this case is going to be at 2, what we did was we said we're going to find x of 2 minus x of 3 halves, and that would give us the displacement over one piece of our of our kind of our, our, our journey, right? Which if you think about it, that's what this is going to be, right? And then we would find the absolute value of that. 
and then we'd add x of 6 minus x of 2, which if you think about it, that's what this is going to be, right? And we'd find the absolute value. So this piece goes here, this piece goes here, because we've already found the integrals, essentially. And we just have to plug that in, and it's not going to be pretty, but that's okay. So plugging in 2, I'm going to have 2 times 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 plus 4. minus 2 times 3 halves cubed, put that in little parentheses, minus 9 times 3 halves squared, plus, hopefully you can't hear the ice cream truck that just went outside, times 3 halves plus 4, all that in one big parenthesis, uh, sorry, all that one big absolute value. Plus, the absolute value of x of 6 minus x of 2. So I'm going to do this right underneath here. Um, so we're going to have 2 times 6 cubed minus 9 times 6 squared plus 12 times 6 plus 4 minus parentheses 2 times 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 plus 4 and since this is a free response question, you're going to leave it like that because it's free response and you're allowed. Okay? All right. And with that, we move on. All right. Next. Question three. Which of the following integrals correctly corresponds to the area of the region in the figure below? All right. Yes, they actually leave things in integrals and expect you to find them on multiple choice. It's a weird looking question. You just deal with it. All right. Notice how these are all in X. That tells you you're going to integrate in X. So we're going to go top to bottom. Okay. So 5 to X squared. So that eliminates this one, that one, and that one. Right. And then remember, and this is where they trap people. Your bounds are in X, right? And if your bounds are in X, you want X squared equals 5. So then X equals square root both sides. X equals plus or minus root 5. A huge number of people will go from 0 to 5 because that's, that's the easier thing to do, right? But remember, your bounds are in x. If nothing else, look down at your x-axis. They're certainly not going 0 to 5. They're going negative something to positive something, around 2-ish. Okay, so your answer here is b. Okay? Um, but this is an easy trap, because the easier numbers are 0 to 5. Okay, so be very careful on this question. Number 4. If f of x equals 3x squared plus x over 3x squared minus x, then f prime of x is, and they give you lots of choices here. This is an easy question to trap people because they will spend an hour trying to do this question when this is actually an easy question. Your first thing to do, when in doubt, factor. Make the answer easier if you can. So f of x is a factor on the top, we can take out a 3x, uh, a factor out an x, and you get 3x minus 1. Factor out an x on the bottom, and we get 3x plus 1. Uh, sorry, on the top you get 3x plus 1, on the bottom you get 3x minus 1. 
and these cancel. And now this is a much easier problem to do. Now we take a derivative, and this is quotient rule certainly. So low d high minus high d low. So low 3x minus 1, d high is 3, minus high 3x plus 1, d low is 3, over low squared, 3x minus 1 squared. We can see that it's probably shaping up to be this guy, but we can never tell, so we'll keep going. And we keep going, 3x times 3 is 9x minus 3 minus 3, and, and we have to be careful here. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. 3 times 3x is 9x plus 3 times 1 is 3, 3x minus 1 squared. And then watch what happens when I take this out of parentheses. 9x minus 3 minus 9x minus 3. 3x minus 1 squared. 9x minus 9x cancels. Minus 3 minus 3 gives us that minus 6. So our answer is in fact C. Excellent! All right. And our final question. If x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 8, find dy dx. Okay? And this is just a classic uh, implicit differentiation question. Okay? So, derivative of x squared is 2x minus 2xy. So we have to be careful that we have product rule here. Okay, So I'm going to treat minus 2x as being the first and I'm going to treat y as being the second. Okay, So der um, derivative of the first gives me minus 2 times the second is y plus the first gives me negative 2x. Derivative of the second gives me y prime, or dy dx. Plus, derivative of 3y squared is 6y y prime. Equals derivative of 8 is 0. They will trap you on this, and you can see they have it right here in their 8. Right? And they leave it there, and they leave it there to catch people and get them every time. Okay? So, derivative of 8 is 0. And you can bet that the rest of that answer is correct. Okay? So be careful. Alright, we keep the y primes on one side, we move everything else to the other. So I'm going to have negative 2x y prime plus 6y y prime Oops. equals... And then moving them over, and remember when we move them over, we have to change the sign. So I'm going to move negative 2x plus 2y. Factor out a y prime. y prime negative 2x plus 6y equals negative 2x plus 2y. And then divide y prime equals negative 2x plus 2y over negative 2x plus 6y. But now I look at all the answers and none of them look right. What happened? Well, this one looks close. They have positive 2x, negative 2y, negative 6y. Maybe I should just pick that, pick that one. Uh, maybe not, right? Let's start by putting all of these negatives on the inside. So I could have 2y minus 2x, right? So this is my positive 
right? I'm, I'm just rearranging them over 6y minus 2x, right? And so I haven't changed anything. I'm just rearranging. So now my 2x, so now my bo the bottom here is exactly the same, but my top, I'm off by a negative. Maybe I should just choose that when I made a mistake. Maybe not. Remember what we said last time, when in doubt, factor. So if I factor on the top, I'm going to get 2 times y minus x. And on the bottom, I'm going to get 2, 3y minus x. These will cancel. And now I have y minus x over 3y minus x. That looks a lot better. And that looks like e. So don't just say, hey, well, it looks pretty close to that when I'm going to pick it. No, make it look exactly right. The other thing I want to point out, though, is let's say you had gotten this and it was off by two negatives. So let's say I had gotten not this, but I had gotten this. x minus y over x minus 3y. So now I'm not off like I was here, right? Here I was off, the bottom was right, but the top was off by, was off by 1. Here, I'm off by both of them. That's okay. Because if I'm off by both of them, now I multiply by a negative sign. So I'm actually going to multiply the top by negative, and this becomes negative positive, and this becomes negative positive. If I change both of them, then I go back to this, because it'll be positive y, negative x, positive 3y, negative x. So if they're both wrong, both the top and the bottom, you can actually make it work. But if only one of them's wrong, something's off, and you need to check it, okay? So just a warning there. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys tomorrow.